morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you are joining me for this video. Thank you yet again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. I am Roy. Today is January 16th, 2018. It's a big deal day for me because I'm teetering on the big 4-0, 40 years old, letting that swirl around in my noggin upstairs. Before I get started, what I would like to do is I would like to throw out two big, sincere thanks. First to the viewers, you guys who are supportive and who've been watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, it means a lot to me. The amount of support and encouragement that I'm receiving at this time was not expected. Not only from my fountain pen community, but as well as from the mixed martial arts community. I got two different communities from entirely opposite extremes, watching my videos and hearing what I have to say, both sides being open-minded. The fountain pen community on one hand saying to themselves, well, who's this new guy? Why should we listen to him? You know what, let's give him a shot. Thank you. And the mixed martial arts community watching my videos saying, well, what does this have to do with us? Well, I'll tell you, for me to be able to communicate to both ends of an extreme means that there is one certain common goal, and that certain common goal is the core of each individual striving for personal perfection and refinement. On one side, it's expression through writing. On the other side, it's perfection of technique for fighting. Two total opposites, one common goal. Thank you for giving me that opportunity. Second, big thank you to David from Fig Boot on Pens. That's a really cool name if you think about it because it's Bigfoot and he switches to the F and B. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. I see what you're doing there, David. If you're watching this, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day, which is no doubt busy and flooded with fan mail, emails, and whatnot. But thank you for taking that time to do your best to tutor me in successful video production and video reviews. I have received, processed, and utilized everything that you have said to me. As well as SBRE Brown, thank you for uh, your correspondence and suggestions. It means more than I could even say. Moving on, the subject of today's video is going to be these bad boys right here. These are gonna be your Franklin Kristoff Model 03, I can't get the clips to face you guys. Model 03 Iterum Fountain Pens, both of which are equipped with 14 karat extra fine stub italic gradient nibs. Very cool pens. This one here is the emerald and white, and this one here is smoke and maroon. Well, because the, the finial is, is, is maroon and, and the rest of it looks like smoke, I believe. That's why they call it that. Now, before I get into the neutral zone, the good, the bad, the ugly about these pens, what I want to do is I want to talk about some background information in regard to these pens. Starting with the company that is Franklin Christoph. Started in 1901. At the time, it was called the Franklin Company. What they dealt with was ceramics. All the way, generations passed into 2001, at which time they did, in fact, rebrand their name to Franklin Kristoff. They were no longer the Franklin Company. They released their very first fountain pen. They stopped dealing in ceramics, and they only then dealt with fine accessories, such as fountain pens. Fast forward to later, now we have the Franklin Kristoff Model 03 Iterum. Now, I think I'm pronouncing that right, and if I'm not, once again, Iterum, please feel free to comment down below using phonetic spelling to instruct me on how to pronounce it correctly. I don't speak Latin. But that's what it means in Latin. Iterum means again or once again. It pays homage to their first model of fountain pen that they released. That was your crash course and background information regarding Franklin Christoph. Moving on to the neutral zone, that which is neither good or bad or could be good or bad depending on you. Let me start with our packaging. The packaging standard comes in one of these boxes. What you get inside is one of these puppies. This is a leather, and it's actual leather, single pen pouch. It's zippered, it's nice, it has some embossing on the front and on the other side. Really cool, 
Now, although the standard is for you to be able to get one of these with each pen, if for whatever reason you're not cool with that, you can just reach out to them and tell them, listen, I want the standard clamshell box. Inside the cardboard box, we have three cards. One card is pretty much a business card. Information on the back, pedigree information such as name, location, phone numbers, email addresses, yada, yada, yada. Then your warranty card looks a lot like a business card. It's a lifetime warranty. I'm not sure if it's the lifetime of the pen or the lifetime of you, but either way, something goes wrong with this pen, they got your back. Good stuff. And then finally, you got your identification of what kind of nib you got. This one is a stub italic gradient. And on the back, it just tells you the nib type it is, nib tip, and a signature that I can't really read, but it looks nice. Awesome stuff made right here in the US of A. Focus back on me, camera. There we go. Now, in order for me to get into this review, what I have to do is describe to you what a stub italic gradient nib is in the event that you don't know what it is. What this is, is an italic nib that doesn't have the throat slashing jugular cutting effect on the paper that cursive italic nibs have. Yet, it does have more delineation and line variation than your standard stub italic nib. It has all the good qualities of a cursive italic without the watered down look of a stub nib. I have used both of these nibs and I have to say that they are true to their name and they're true to what they were designed for. There is just a little bit of feedback to the nibs. Now this could be either good or bad because you may not like feedback. On top of the feedback, there is an element and it's a very slight one of squeakiness. Now I'm not talking every time you write with it, you're thinking mice invaded your house. That's not the case. The way it is is this. Franklin Kristoff got some dude sitting inside their store or wherever their location is and he's personally tuning, adjusting, and grinding each one of these stub italic nibs. So every single stub italic gradient nib that you get that gets sent out has been touched by this guy's magic dust. Continuing on with the neutral, I want to talk about the threads that close the cap. Now this may be a point of contention for some, and it's fine because not everybody has to agree with me, but I consider the threads that are located at the top of the pen more of a neutral quality. Reason being is because the grip section at the bottom where the cap meets the body has a step. Now this step is obvious. It is an obvious step and it is there. If some people prefer to hold their pens higher up. They are going to encounter this step. The threads being there wouldn't have made it, in my opinion, any worse than encountering the step. Now, the threads being up top, it is a single thread. What that creates is a situation where if people would rather hold their pens, pens up close, closer to the nib, they're now going to encounter the threads. So basically what, to me, what Franklin Kristoff has done is they have just moved the threads to affect one end of the spectrum as opposed to the other. That could be good or bad. In my honest opinion, I think that regardless of where the threads are, this is a great pen. And I have never met anybody who said, you know what, I would have loved writing with that pen, but the threads were so annoying, it debilitated me and now I can't write ever again. Neither good or bad. I think it is innovative and I think it's a different approach and I like it. But in terms of efficacy, or optimization, I kind of find it, it depends on the user and how they grip the pen. And here's another interesting fact that's neither good or bad. As you rotate to close the pen, it takes about one and a quarter turns to open it and close it. There is more movement, obviously, because since it's a single thread, the pen travels further and more quickly into the pen cap than would a traditional fountain pen. The design and the shape of the pen, it's 
straight design with a very, very subtle slight taper. It looks very antique in a way, yet at the same time it looks modern. I would describe this best as it looks very Baroque. I would say Renaissance, but the problem with saying Renaissance is we have so many Renaissance pens and the themes behind the Renaissance pens are brown colors, such as the Visconti Medici, such as the Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown. So I don't really associate this so much with Renaissance as I do. It has a very Baroque look to it, yet at the same time, modern. Modern Baroque, could that be? I don't know. I like it, modern Baroque. It looks modern Baroque. We have four diamond etchings on the clip. We also have an engraving around the circumference of the bottom of the cap. There is no center band and it basically just says Franklin Christoph and it also tells you the model number. These pens are cartridge converter fountain pens. They come with a standard international converter. Same one that you get with Edison fountain pens. Similarly, with Edison fountain pens. These pens are eyedropper convertible. All you would have to do is slap on some silicone grease on the grip section and you're good to go. Just be advised when it comes to eyedropper conversion, you're always gonna have the dreaded burping and leaking, more so in the winter time. It is flat on top, flat on bottom. Again, neither good nor bad, depending on you. If you like rounded tops, it's bad. If you like flat tops, it's good. The grip section has a slight inward swoop that comes up to a flare right to where the threads are. And be advised, an interesting fact about the Franklin Kristoff fountain pens are the nibs and the nib units are identical to that you would see inside of a Edison pen. So if you ever had yourself an Edison pen but you wanted a stub italic gradient nib in it, what you could then do is simply unscrew the nib unit from this pen and put it into your Edison pen. Now, enough of the neutral. I want to get to the good, the bad, and the ugly, starting with the good. On to the good. A pen is only as good as it writes, correct? So the first thing I would like to talk about is the nib. This stub italic gradient, extra fine, 14 karat, number six Yovo nib is fantastic. Ink flow is fantastic. The nib is smooth with a hint of squeak, hint of feedback, but is overall very smooth, writes very well. The extra fine in the stub italic gradient gives you a hint of italic quality, but not enough for anyone to stop and say, hey, is that calligraphy? No, they're gonna see that there is a uniqueness in the writing, and you're gonna feel it when you write, that there is a unique quality about it that gives it elegance, it gives it an exquisite look to it. The shape of the nib tip in the stub italic gradient also somehow as you're writing because of the flat of it, it actually guides the slant. So what I find is it really does make my writing look better than I can actually write. It also looks, as I said before, very unique but a hint of uniqueness, enough that I can feel it when I write it and enough that a reader can see it when they read it. But it's not ostentatious, it's not in your face, and it's not loud. I also have a steel stub italic gradient nib that I'm gonna provide a writing sample of. I know I owe you guys a lot of writing samples in medium. This one is more closer to your standard 1.1 or maybe 1.0, maybe slightly less stub nibs. It has a finer cross stroke and a very definitive downstroke. You'll see that in the writing sample when I upload it. Now, the nib, like I said, is fantastic. You cannot go wrong with the nibs. If you wanted one in gold, the pen comes out to 285. If you want one in steel, it comes out to 175, or I think it's 175. That is a fantastic deal, and that has to be expressed here in the good. Moving on to other aspects that are good, I want to talk about the resin. The acrylic used in this pen is called emerald. Now, let me describe this one because this one is hard to describe, and it's hard to see within pictures or videos online. What makes this pen very particular and unique is that in the dark emerald, 
although it does have a slight translucency, it doesn't have chatoyance. It doesn't have that cat's eye effect of resin. What it does end up doing is it almost looks metallic, like a translucent metallic green. I find it very cool. One thing I should also point out in every color that you get is the polishing is done to a glass-like sheen. I love it. Now, I don't know if the interior is intentionally unpolished to the same standards the outside is or not. It could have been intentional. It could have just been, hey, why are we going to do it? What you do need to know is if you do choose to eyedropper it, the ink will not stain the interior. And if it does, because you're using some sort of potent ink that's heavily concentrated in dyes or particulates, which you shouldn't be using because particulates aren't good for your feeds, know that you can soak it and easily get it out. Use a Q-tip, swab it out, whatnot. That's the emerald green. I want to now talk about the smoke and maroon. The smoke and maroon, although same in that it shares a very Baroque, elegant, modern, yet antiquitous look. The resin is different. This one does, in fact, have way more depth and more chatoyance, more cat's eye effect. In person, when you're looking at it, compared to the videos and the pictures that Franklin Christoph has on the website. In addition, what I also want to point out in the emerald and white is the polishing on the cap. Now, the polishing on this cap, if you can see right here, is so well done that I almost thought that the top part of the cap, the top section of the cap, right where I'm trying to point, right there, was a singular tubular piece with the rest of the cap. That is not the case. And I discovered this while looking at my emerald and white by looking inside the cap. Now what I found out inside the cap was the clip assembly is made of at least two, if not three parts. On the interior of the cap, there is a metal ball that connects to the hinge that comes out from inside the resin. It then attaches to the long part of the clip by what looks like two bolts and an L bracket. The L bracket coming out to here and the clip attaching to the L bracket. I was wondering to myself, how did they get the L bracket into the pen to connect to the ball if this was one piece? And that is how I discovered that it is in fact two pieces and the polishing on it is so meticulous and so finely done that they almost had me fooled. However, the same cannot be said for the smoke and maroon. I don't think it's the color that had anything to do with it, but I do believe since these are handmade, hand-turned pens, that there is slight variation between them. This pen here, where the uh, cap assembly is at the top, does have a slight separation, where had it been polished a little more, it would have been indiscernible, and you could rub it and feel it, and there would be nothing there. Now lastly, now this is a very small, minute thing, but these little minutia are things that always get to me. And this is a very good quality that I'm, I've discovered. When it comes to the threads, and I'm not talking the threads for capping the pen, when it comes to the threads of connecting and disconnecting the grip section to the body, what you'll find, as everybody does with Edison pens, are super smooth, well done threads. They're fantastic. There's a slight difference and there is no negative or positive with regard to the differences. If you take your standard production line Edison pen, right here I have a, a Collier Persimmon Swirl, and you undo the threads for the body and the grip section and you put it together and then you start to turn it and you stop halfway, what you'll notice is there's going to be slight wiggle room between the body threads and the grip threads. I don't know if you can hear the wiggle. It's very, very, very minute. And I'm talking micromillimeter minute. And then it's super smooth all the way from the beginning to the end. Now, Franklin Christoph pens as well 
share that same high quality smooth threads. The difference is when you attach the body and then you turn them halfway, there is no wiggle room. It's almost non-existent. So the threads, not only are they smooth, but they're much tighter than they are in your Edison pens. Does it make one better than the other? No, it's just an attention and craftsmanship detail that I believe is possibly more so a preference by the maker than it is any kind of oversight or lackadaisical attitude towards threads. But in both cases, the Edison or the Franklin Kristoff, the quality and craftsmanship is probably, I think, the best there is on the planet. Now, talking about the bad, let's talk coin. I don't know what to tell you. Because starting at $175 with your standard steel nib, what they call at Franklin Christoph the high performance steel nib, ranging all the way to $285 with your upper echelon pen with a 14 karat nib ground by Masayama, that's a specialty nib, the pricing is super reasonable. So when it comes to the bad, when it comes to talking coin, there just isn't any bad to talk about here. The warranty is lifetime. I'm not sure if it's the lifetime of the pen or the lifetime of you, but either way, something goes wrong, guess what? They got your back. So from here, let's move on to the ugly. Talking about the ugly, if I really absolutely had to find something to nitpick because I'm a miserable bastard and I have to just find something wrong with it, I would have to look very hard. I'd have to scrutinize, I'd have to inspect, but I did come up with something. It's very minor. It's so minor, in fact, that me talking about it makes me, if I weren't me, want to punch me in the face. But I'm going to talk about it since I did discover it. And it comes with the engraving that's on the cap, the Franklin Kristoff that goes around the circumference of the cap. If you look at the, the etching, for some reason on both pens, the word Franklin is less apparent than the Kristoff and the O3. I don't know why. I don't know why that happens. There is one other thing that I do want to speak about in regard to the ugly. And that's with the emerald and green only. This emerald and green finial is slightly, slightly, and ever so slightly off. It's probably half a degree slanted rotated counterclockwise. I'm almost getting mad at myself just talking about it. But overall, the ugly is very, very minor. As there is no such thing as a perfect pen, I have to say that this is pretty close. Okay, having spoken about the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's high noon. Decision-making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on this pen? I'm pretty sure if you got this far in the video, the answer is rather clear. Yes, pull the trigger on this pen. As a matter of fact, go nuts, blind fire. Keep going until you're in slide lock, drop slap rack and ready. I hope this helps you make a decision regarding the Franklin Kristoff Model 03 Iterum Fountain Pen. Once again, thank you all for joining me for this video. Be safe, see you next time.